Welcome to Bet the Edge on Monday, July 5th. We hope you all had a happy, wonderful, and safe Independence Day. And thank you to those of you watching on our brand new NBC Sports Edge YouTube channel today. Coming up, Von Delzell, he has a ton of MLB props for today. Plus, NBA Finals line that he's eyeing right now. And Brad Thomas will get into where he sees value in Euro 2020 semifinals plus edge of the day. All that and more coming up right here on Bet the Edge, powered by PointsBet. Look, there's really no other way for me to say it. You're missing out. If you're not playing this, you're missing out. It's the free contests on the NBC Sports Predictor app. They've already handed out over $3 million in cash prizes, and there are tens of thousands more up for grabs this and every week. So get in on the action right now with the NBC Sports Predictor app, powered by PointsBet. Good morning, Sarah Perlman and Drew Densick with you and fired up to get into everything we will today, Drew, but I would like to begin the show. Just curious how your 4th of July was. My 4th of July was tremendous. It was (laughs) a beautiful weekend here in California. Spent a lot of time at the beach, got to do a lot of my favorite activities at the beach. So I've had a great time. How was your 4th of July weekend? I was also in California, came back. It was wonderful. I'm convinced that I need to move out there very soon. So throughout the podcast, if you have any recommendations where I should live, please tweet me that as well. And also tweet me uh, and tweet us if there's anything else you want to talk about on the podcast. Of course, you could also comment along on our YouTube channel if you're joining us live. Now, there's a match going on at 11.50 a.m. Eastern, and I know you have a play on it and thoughts on it. So before we get to anything else, I know Federer is taking on a competitor, and he is a hefty favorite in today. Tell me a little bit what you're thinking. Yeah, I've been sweating tennis all morning, <laughs> as, is, as is tradition. <laughs> as is tradition, the second Monday of Wimbledon at the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, uh, it's called Manic Monday. And the the reason it's called Manic Monday is they put every single player on the court, uh, both men's and women's, all of the round of 16 matches all on display today. And the tennis has been incredible. There's been comebacks. There's been drama. We have seen Rublev go out. We've seen uh, Sebastian. The the last American standing on the men's side was Sebastian Korda. Uh, He had so many chances to put away Karin Hachinov could not get it done. The drama has been real right now. The um, I guess it, yes, it is the last. Uh, the well, there's two American women in action right now. Madison Keys is going up against very very impressive Swiss player Glubich, and then uh, Coco Goff is in action. She's down yeah. a break to pre past champion Angela Kerber. Uh, but yeah, no. If you want a little bit of a tennis sweat with me, I have one play on the on the uh, late match here. Federer goes off on center court um here at about noon eastern and this has been a fascinating market to watch it mature federer opened up as a minus 323 favorite he was bet out to minus 385 before mount before money has just come pouring in on the underdog here lorenzo sonigo sonigo has only played federer once they played on clay which is sonigo's preferred surface and federer destroyed him at the french open in 2019 so i am not exactly sure uh what all of this um you know market support for the underdog has come from people must be thinking federer is out of form he's uh he obviously has had a tough tournament to this point but he has had a tough path his first round opponent manarino was no slouch his third round opponent cam nori was extremely on form and so the fact that he didn't look great in those contests was not a surprise but he's found his form now sonigo has beaten no one of substance at all i think this is going to be a clean win for federer i've backed him to win 3-0 at plus 155 and uh now down to plus 150 so a little bit of uh, a little bit of market you know coming back in my favor a little bit here but i think federer gets through cleanly and i think he's going to be impressive he's you know by far and away the class player in this match so thinking he gets through in straights is not a big uh, big ask in my opinion quite possibly the reason for money coming in on sonigo is the fact that he's coming off straight set wins but to your point not against a notable opponent compared to federer he uh, won versus james duckworth now for those of us who want the sweat 
at 11.50. You could join that. He's taking Roger Federer to win in straight sets plus 150 now, as Drew mentioned. And for people like me who do not handicap tennis, rather follow Drew Densick, I'll take us to baseball, a line that I'm keeping my eye on throughout the day, Drew. It's the Dodgers and the Marlins. There's a few things I like about this game. It's at seven, the total. Um, I do like the under, but what stands out the most actually is going to be the Marlins plus one and a half. It's Walker Bueller. It was going to be Trevor Bauer quite possibly. Obviously, he is now not with the team. Um, a lot of stuff happening there. So I think outside noise with the Dodgers. But on top of it, I love this pitcher for the Miami Marlins. Of course, you know who I'm talking about. It's Trevor Rogers. And he has been spectacular. Nine quality starts. So good at home. 2-1-8 ERA. The Marlins have lost on a pretty big losing streak. Rather, they're two and three in their last five. But all three of the, those losses have come just by one run. I do ultimately think that this will be a close game. A ton of pitchers, excuse me, a, a good pitchers duel, low scoring game gives it a better chance, not to mention Miami's at home. And as we know, if you're going to take a team on the run line, it is best to take them when they are at home. So that's a line that I'm keeping my eye on right now. Marlins plus one and a half, minus 131. And money has come in on it this morning when I woke up, minus 120. And now, of course, you're seeing money come in on the Miami Marlins with such a good starting pitcher on the mound, Drew. Brilliant. No, I love this play. I'm all about this. I you don't have to twist my arm to give to look for a home run line uh, underdog on the uh, especially in the month of July. Uh, let's yes. go Marlins. All right, gonna root for the Marlins and Trevor Rogers today, who by the way could win National League Rookie of the Year for what it's worth. If you like to dabble in the futures market, he's the favorite. To continue with baseball, let's bring on Von Delzel, who has always amazing props in Major League Baseball. So let's stick with MLB for a minute here. And you're a K-Prop King. That's what your new nickname. It was Miles Money Bridges. Now it's K-Prop King. We'll see what I come up with later in the dog days of summer, Von. But there's always K-Props you're eyeing throughout the day. So what's the first one that you like and we're looking to get action in throughout the day? Yeah, I was feeling really, really, really good uh, heading into Sunday. And I was joking with Drew. I got the kiss of death from NBC's Twitter. <laughs> I like K-Prop unders a lot in this one, but I'm going with the over with Brandon Roof for a couple of reasons now. He's hit the over in 10 of his last 18 games, which has been pretty spectacular, two, six and two on the road. So in his last eight in particular, he's been on fire when it comes to away games in the Mets. High strikeout probability. They're number one in the last seven ga- seven days, last 15 days, and number two in the last 30. Okay, he's just faced Arizona and Chicago. Those two teams are top four in strikeouts as well in the last seven days. Similar opponent here, Garrett Cole, who I, we've talked about a lot, had six Ks against the Mets. You're asking Woodruff to get one more against them. I like this one here as the NBC model has him up to almost eight strikeouts. So I'll take the six and a half that's only available on points bet right now. I like it. Uh, I feel like I could strike out a couple Mets. So I think, uh, <laughs> I think, I think you got this, man. I'd pay um, to watch that, by the way, too, for what it's worth. I'd pay a lot of money. It's to been watch a while. That. It's been a while, but I you think I could get. I think I could get a couple Mets. <laughs> what about uh, what about the uh, the the look that uh, Sarah had? She was she's backing the uh, the run line here with the Miami Marlins. But uh, you're a little cooler on Rogers today. It looks like. Yeah, well, I do like Sarah's look in this one. I was pretty. I was pretty shocked to see the line for the Marlins in their favor, but Rogers has been that good this season. I mean, I cannot sugarcoat that in any way, but what I look at is him is the six and a half mark has been right on the money all year. A lot of the markets that we've seen have, have come down or come up now into these sharp lines that are getting hard to play. But with mm-hmm. the K prep market in general, um, this is one that stayed the same almost the entire season at six and a half. So at this line, he's two and four at home usually around five or six Ks. This is going to be a sweat no matter what. On the season, he's only 50% on this line. But the Dodgers, a great hitting team. They stay around that 10% walk rate. Rodgers has had some walk rate issues, but his spin rate is the lowest it's been all season. He's at 1838 RPMs in the last start. To enter June, it was a little bit over 2,000. So it's dropped significantly. Even though he's doing okay on the strikeouts, the Dodgers are going to be a hard team to strike out. They do very well against righties, lefties, no matter who it is. They've only had six guys, six on the entire year of the 26 um, in this spot, hit, 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 hit seven strikeouts. So I like the Rodgers under. He's a young guy. I think the Dodgers will get after him early in this one. But the under is a good look. 
I, uh, I do tend to agree on the strikeout prop strictly because of the spin rate. We've talked about that issue, and now these lines are sh so sharp with the foreign substance coming in. It's affected a lot of strikeout props. So I do like the under in this look. As you alluded to, the Dodgers walk a ton. They are so patient at the plate as a unit. I will say points bet let us know 80% of the bet count and handle coming in on the over case for Rodgers in this one. Now, when it comes mm. to the NBA, we will see the finals tomorrow, and so excited, but of course, you can get in now there's a ton of lines that will be available as of now and of course till the game tomorrow but you could argue there's value before the public and everyone starts rushing to bet uh the nba finals so what caught your eye as of now Vaughn? yeah so there's only some suns props available right now uh on points bet but uh looking overall in general i was trying to find some significant stats now with Giannis, um uh, not announced yet it's hard to tell whether or not you know judge your decision and you can't bet on the bucks yet but the market overall, look at guys like Drew Holiday and Chris Paul when it comes to assists. Um, in the series, in the, in the Eastern Conference and Western Conference Finals, Drew Holiday had 17.3 potential assists per game. Okay, that led the NBA. So that's a significant number right there. Chris Paul had 16 in the four games he played on average. So those two guys are probably going to come in around the 8.5, 9.5 mark. Chris Paul is at plus 109.5. That's actually the best value number you're going to get out of all the sports books I saw so far. They're all in the minus. Uh, guys like Chris Middleton on the rebounds, he's averaging over 13 potential rebounds a game. Uh, that's that's a high amount for a forward, especially with Giannis out. That's number has gone up a little bit. I talked about Bobby Portis. Of course, I got hooked the one time I play, and then the very next game, he gets the nine that I needed the game before. Um, but – Look at those factors, what Bobby Portis will do in matching up with Aiden because Aiden's a foul trouble type of guy. And I will hit on Devin Booker. Now, he only shot 38% from the field and 28% from three in the, in the Western Conference Finals. That's going to be significant against a Bucks team because you see Jeru Holiday is probably going to guard Chris Paul for the most part. And that's going to factor in Chris Paul's point total because Drew Holiday is a great defender. But will Devin Booker take a step up and be that guy to score 25-30? Because if he is... I love the finals MVP value for him right now. You can get around 275, the 300 mark. Um, you know, if Chris Paul's not getting it, you got to think Devin Booker's next in line right now with the Suns the favorite to win it all. Hmm. Interesting look. I'm going to save most of my finals thoughts for tomorrow's broadcast, but uh, Ooh, I think you're on to something there. there. That's a pretty nice, uh, nice look. We are coming up on the NBA draft as well. For those of you who don't know, betting on the draft markets is probably one of the more fun things. You, you know, you get into yeah. sports betting and then you realize like, whoa, there are, uh, you know, there are ways you know, where you have a clear advantage over the bookmaker and the draft prop information market is one of those. How do you look at the board as we've seen things uh, open up here? And do you think uh, anything catch your eye as you look across the draft draft market? Yeah, one piece of advice getting closer to the draft is definitely follow people that have the inside information or just reporters for the teams in general, because they will tweet something out and you can get that information an hour or two before a sports book actually will adjust completely. Last year for an Example, Patrick Williams, uh, being a Bulls fan, I saw the reporter tweet out that the Bulls are pretty sold on Patrick Williams at four. And uh, at that time, Sportsbooks had him to go four at plus 1,500, plus 2,000. Um, and I grabbed the one, two, three, four order and grabbed him at four and hit on that. At, uh, I think I put 10 bucks to win 350, for example, because I was like, you know, there's still a chance he might not. And looking back on it, I was like, I could have been a rich man. Uh, so obviously there's a lot of value on following the right people and getting the inside information, but with the market now, Kate Cunningham's going number one. We know that he's minus 1000. Now it's actually moved back. Or yeah. It's moved back from minus 800, uh, guys like Jalen green. He's creeping up. He was in the G league, a uh, tremendous talent, young guy, but a couple guys that I look at Evan Mobley, I like him a lot to go to Houston or Cleveland. Those two spots are very ideal. Cleveland got rid of Andre Drummond. Mobley would be a great fit there with, Sexton and Garland being able to run and do the fast pace. Mobley, a 7-1 athletic guy, can shoot and play terrific defense, led the country in blocks per game. So I like him there to go two or four. I would look at those two markets, but my best bet of overall to get it early is Jalen Johnson over 12 and a half. This is only on a couple of markets right now. The Duke product had so many red flags, and you're telling me he's going to be a lottery selection? This is my face right now. I'm not hearing that. I'm impressed. This, this guy left early. He left Duke after 13 games, only averaged 21 minutes per game. Okay, so he wasn't playing that much. He probably did not fit in with either it was his teammates, 
his coach. I'm not here to speculate all that much, but he had issues. And on the court, he didn't very much impress me for the guy for his size. I mean, he's 6'9", 6'10", round 220. Everyone says he's got that Kevin Durant, Brandon Ingram type build. Um, I'm not seeing the talent level right there right now. I'm seeing a lot of inconsistencies offensively and defensively. I'm seeing a lack um, just of overall um, being into the game and being with his teammates all 100%. So I think Jalen Johnson is the guy that's going to fall out of the lottery. You can grab him right now over 12 and a half. Yes, over 12 and a half draft selection. You could find that, as you mentioned, and the NBA draft uh, date starts July 29th. So you want to get in now before we get too soon. Vaughn, thanks so much. As always, love having you on. Thank you, guys. Good luck today. You can follow Vaughn on Twitter at VMoneySports. He has so many plays available on his social media and our NBCSportsEdge.com puts a ton up there as well. We appreciate you listening to Bet the Edge. Rate the podcast. If you're not a daily subscriber, do not forget to sign up. Remember, here on Bet the Edge, we give you all the information you need for your wagers every single weekday, and we try to get it all done in about 25 minutes. That's right. And you can always reach out to us on Twitter, give us feedback, get, ask us questions, uh, provide useful nuggets of your own experience across the betting landscape. You can find Sarah at Sarah Perlman and you can reach me at whale underscore capper. We are so excited to now bring in Brad Thomas to talk about Euro semifinals. We saw awesome quarterfinal games and now we're going to see Italy in Spain, and I am really excited for this matchup. I wasn't a firm believer in Italy, but listen, they're a huge liability at points bet. They're now in the semifinals against Spain, and we talked about their sound defense last time you were on, Brad, but they've now surrendered a goal in each of its last two games to Belgium and to Austria. So as it stands, what are you targeting in this one? So I'm actually going to be looking at goals. I'm going to do both teams to score. Um, you look at this this team that Roberto Mancini's put together and their philosophy. It's an Italian side that attacks from the middle and they do it consistently. So he likes to apply pressure from the midfield and just keep attacking. It's scary against Spain uh, because they have they were rated third in defensive efficiency this Euro tournament. But when you have a team who's averaging over two point seven expected goals per game in Italy, you know they're going to score. Well. Like you said, Italy's conceded multiple times. Well, I like Spain to score. They're the number one rate attacking team. Even though they didn't hit that two-goal mark last time, they're going to score at least one. The price is very good at minus 105 for both teams to score. And you have to think about, yeah, the the, the price is, is set that way because no Spinazzola for uh, Italy. That's a huge loss in the midfield. Yeah. But they're just so deep. And we talked about this earlier uh, in the Euros is like deep teams – are going to win out overall, and Illy can just next man up. I really, really liked when they put in Chiesa because he, his pace, uh, his touch, everything just makes them such a better attack. Like when they're playing Belgium, there were multiple times when I was scared. I was like, I don't know if Italy are going to qualify, but then they they just attack. They just attack when they get the ball. They're not settling. Yeah, no, I think that's good too. In uh, worst case scenario. They are dramatic in the in the penalty box. Uh, you know, th- anyone gets bumped inside the inside the penalty area, very likely uh, potentially draw a penalty. So, um, and I know as someone who uh, you know, I I had doubted Italy. I was not uh, a believer. Uh, the way they played against Belgium, especially in that first half, was incredible. They were absolutely dynamic. They probably should have gotten three in that first half, if, if we're being honest. The decision to put uh, Chiesa into that starting group was pretty pretty spectacular. And great call. Act. The fact that uh, they've lost their defender, you know, that, the, I don't know, probably was in sort of the running for um, player of the tournament. Oh, in yeah. Spinozola. Like he was, he was having an incredible, incredible tournament. And now he is out for the duration. Um, so, yeah, leaky on both sides. Uh, I'm probably going to play a little over two and a half here. I'm seeing plus 125 on that right now. Um, considering how leaky Spain was too, uh, you know, they they were pretty sloppy with the goal, uh, you know, you know, in that uh, Swiss game, they've given up some uh, some laughable goals themselves. But I guess let's uh, let's talk about the match everybody will be keying on for Wednesday, which is England at home hosting Denmark. Uh, Denmark has been um, an incredible story. 
this entire Euro. They have obviously, you know, match one, <clears throat> they have some incredible drama with the, the loss of their captain, um, you know, with the heart issue. And, and since then, they have bounced back and gotten themselves to the semifinals, but they have to go into hostile territory now and take on an England team that is white hot, having come through 4-0 against Ukraine. I, I can't really pick a winner here, honestly. I, I'm kind of cheering for just a good match. Do you have a way to bet this market? Yeah, I'm actually going to take England money line, and it kills me to say this. Like, I, I've been rooting for Denmark the whole time. Uh, I've had Denmark in the quarterfinals, Denmark in the finals, and I still have them in the finals in my pool. But you just think about storylines are so big with soccer, right? Do you think about Southgate, how people were ready to sack him? They didn't like the offensive production he was putting out. And for me, it was kind of embarrassing as someone on the outside looking in, like, the guy is producing wins. Yeah, they're, they're not conceding goals. And finally, finally, they have that explosive game that everyone's been waiting for. Their offensive efficiency is not as high as it should be. You know, they they have too much talent to be, I think they're ninth in offensive efficiency, but their defensive efficiency is, oh my goodness, it's out of this world. It's, it's number one. You look at that back line with Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire, Stones, Kyle Walker. It's, it's hard to score on them. And then one thing that I really, really like Southgate, uh, that he did last match was putting in Jadon Sancho. He's a master on the ball. He makes things happen. And he's the kind of player who has the brilliance where he can kind of move anywhere on the pitch and still be effective, which kind of opens them up for guys like, like Kane doesn't have to always be the point man. Uh, Sterling doesn't have to, you know, stay on the left wing. It, it gives them a lot more creativity. Denmark beat them the last time they played, 1-0. Like, that's the obvious. So a lot of people know this is going to be a grinding, low-scoring game, but – I really do like England to win here. I mean, they got the storylines. I think they have the better talent. They have, definitely have the better defense. That's that's hands down. And mm -hmm. at some point, the Denmark story is going to end. England playing in Wembley, like, it's just, there's just too many good storylines to, to fade this. I've seen the price as high as minus 155, as low as minus 140. I think anywhere in the middle is a great price to take England. And that's what we're sitting at right now with England minus 143. You like them and a lot of others because 90% of the money at points bet is coming in on England to win this one. Now, you mentioned Harry Kane. You did talk about him, and he's been fantastic. You can find him to score at plus 125. Is that a good number? Because we know what he could do. He had two goals against Ukraine. He's now tied with Raheem Sterling for the most goals in Euro 2020, three goals thus far. Plus 125, now plus 130, rather. Not the biggest odds, but he is their star, their captain, lead goal scorer. What do you think? Yes, I have taken Harry Kane to score. He's two goals back from the Golden Boot. There's markets there that are 8-1 to one for him to win the Golden Boot, and you better believe he's going to try everything in his power to do that. I would have set the price closer to even money. Last game, he was minus 105. We knew that was going to be an England offensive output, but – like Denmark don't have the most secure defense and really how Denmark like to do, like to push the pace similar to like that of an Italy, but they play more out on the wings than Italy does. I would be very hard pressed to see England score. And it's someone other than Sterling or Kane and Kane is their goal funnel at the beginning of the season. <laughs> I was at the beginning of the euros. I was kind of like, Kane's going to win the golden boot hands down. I, I didn't want to bet it because England doesn't score a lot, but it, you kind of saw it last week with his brace that they're looking to get him the ball and he's finally getting in that good form. I, I think he scored three goals on 10 shots with an expected goal mark of 2.98, um, which is very high. So it's not fluky goals. He's actually scoring efficient, being in good spots. I don't know if you're a believer of them or not, Drew. What do you think? Tune in Wednesday. <laughs> wow. Now that's what we call a tease in this business. Well, listen, Brad, we love having you on. I love the Harry Kane look. Um, I do think he scores a goal ultimately in this game. Big fan of his. You can follow Brad on Twitter at Mr. Brad Thomas. So many plays available for you uh, there. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. We wrap up the show on this Monday with edge of the day. And a lot of people have off. We're working, of course, Drew, but some people have off and they're looking yeah. for an edge, a value play. So slim pickings today in the market. A lot of early games. You talked about tennis at the top of the show that's starting at 11.50, no NBA. So edge of the day, what do you think? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's too late to bet Ans Jabor. She's already won. Uh, so we'll, we'll mix it up here. People that um, watch this show have already bet her a thousand it, times. I, I would hope so. She's been a dog in a bunch now, and she continues to get it done. I, it is just awesome. She's a dog again against Sabalenko tomorrow. So uh, we'll You know where I'll be goes. going. <laughs> Ans Jabor. <Dog> <laughs> um, Lightning look to, uh, to lift the trophy tonight. Um, they are minus 160 favorites. That was a big price and a huge adjustment after because you know considering what, what the market looked like in game three. Similarly, I think the uh, the the total market has swung big time here. Um, I think the Canadians can at least get one at home. I'm not going to play them on the money line here, but I do think there is an edge to the under in this match. Uh, we have Carey Price, who can deliver uh, one final stirring performance, keep the Lightning in the one or two goal range here, which gives the Canadians an opportunity to potentially push this to a game five back into Tampa. And uh, I like under five. I got it at plus money. I make this, you know, realistically, I think uh, under five ought to be about minus 120 by my numbers so uh, i will play an under in the stanley cup game four i love it first time i've heard you give out an edge of the day in hockey love the i'm a noted love hockey it. sharp so you know <laughs> eddie old check by the way was spot on not with the winner but the total for wow, friday he said over play. and wow unbelievable came home fairly quickly for my edge of the day, when I'm on a little bit of a cold streak, there's a team I must go back to, and it's the series that I love. Drew, it is the White Sox and the Twins. The total's 10. We know this is my favorite series in terms of totals, and people are betting on the under. I can't figure out why. I know what I like. This is going over. Last week, all three games in this series went over. I do expect a very similar series here. The books have adjusted totals, both in regular total, first five, players to get a hit, home run, everything, because these games tend to go over. So here's what I got. You have Dylan C's pitching. He's starting Monday against Aubert, excuse me, and it's a rematch of Wednesday's game when they played. The score was 13-3. to White Sox did win, of course, went over. Dylan C's ERA around seven against the Twins. He did do better last time around but then if you look at Bailey Ober who has an ERA over five he's not been good against the White Sox this is only a seventh major league start third against the hot hitting Chicago White Sox he took he obviously played them on Wednesday bad loss allowed five runs I ultimately do think this is going to be a high scoring game like we've seen in Minnesota back in Chicago now we're back in Minnesota it's up to 10 for me Drew there's only one way I could play this and it's the over every time these two teams meet we see a million runs. Yes. I love it. Fireworks in Min in Minneapolis. Uh, I will be riding this one with you. I love this look and uh, I will be very much enjoying this game. Yeah, we are excited to watch this one. The White Sox over in five straight games. It's been remarkable if you're tailing them throughout the season, but in particular against the twins thank you so much for joining us here uh, on bet the edge if you aren't already watching us live do so you can join us monday through friday 11 a.m eastern on our nbc sports edge youtube channel if you're listening to us wherever you find your podcast don't forget subscribe rate the podcast of course we appreciate that if you need more tools to help you with your wagers which we all do go to nbcsportsedge.com so many tools uh, that you can use when you're done listening to us that will give you a ton of insight for your plays throughout the day we will be back here tomorrow. Until then, we wish you nothing but the best of luck with all your wagers. And if you have off, enjoy your Independence Day and holiday.